Hello world, I'm Daryl from MakeCode, and today we're going to learn how to make a video game. The kind of game we're going to make is going to be a platformer, like Mario. And you won't need any tools, no prior programming experience, just a web browser and a laptop or tablet. The game we make can run on either your web browser, on your laptop, on a phone, or you can even run it on these little handheld devices. These devices range from 25 to 35 dollars you can show the game off to your friends this way or just play it on the go they're pretty fun there will be links on how to get these in the description let's get started open up a web browser and go to makecode.com once you're here scroll down and click on arcade we're going to use arcade for creating our first game makecode arcade is designed to be super friendly to beginners once you're on this page Click the New Project button and go ahead and give your project a name. I'm going to call mine Cat Jumper because my hero is going to be a cat. All right, so the first thing we see is on the right, this is our blocks workspace. We're going to be programming in blocks in this tutorial. Future tutorials will have lessons in JavaScript as well. On the left, you see a simulation of what our game is going to look like. So let's get started. First of all, Click on the Scenes category and drag out the Set Background Color block. And then in this gray square, click on that and you see this little color palette. Let's pick a sky blue. Now you can see this nice blue background here for our game. Now let's create our hero. Go to the Sprites category and drag out the first block. I'm going to click on this gray square here and then draw a cat. That's going to be my hero. And it's not going to look particularly good, but it should be fine for now. Can always tweak this later. There we go. That sort of looks like a cat. Instead of calling the cat my sprite, I'm going to rename this to cat. And we can see the cat in the center of the screen. Now let's make the cat move. This is pretty easy in Arcade. Just open up the controller category and drag out the Move with Buttons block. And in the dropdown, select Cat. Now, when we use the directional keys on the simulator or the arrow keys on our keyboard, you can see the cat moving around. It's a pretty empty world though for the cat. Let's add some platforms. To do that, we go to the Scene category and drag out the set tile map block. So what a tile map is, is it's a level editor. And in Arcade, levels are represented with images the same as sprites are. Except you'll notice that when I draw here, and when I hit done, you'll see the tiles appear in the simulator. These are the platforms that our cat can walk on. And I use the green color for what's underneath the cat. Let's make them look a little bit better. So I'm going to go to the scene category again. And I'm going to grab the set tile to block. And for the green tiles in our level image here, I'm going to create a custom uh, rendering for them. So let's fill the whole thing with brown for dirt. And I'm going to add some grass coming down from the top. There's a few specks in there. And now underneath, I'm going to make this edge a little jagged. I'm using the transparency block to remove some from the bottom. I'm going to use this sort of dark purple to sort of shade the bottom here. It makes it look a little bit uh, pops out a little bit better. And a couple speckles in there, maybe a little bit of yellow in the green. Let's see how that looks. So now you can see we've got our sort of grass blocks. All right, now that I've got the grass blocks drawn, I'm going to go ahead and move around my cat. Oh, and you can see that the cat goes right through the tiles. And this is because we haven't turned on collision for our tiles. We can do that by turning the wall property on. 
it doesn't have to actually be a wall. Wall just means anything that um, we want our sprites to collide with. And now when I move around the cat, you can see that he stops when running into these, um, these grass tiles. So our cat's moving a little silly. This is, uh, he's not falling down. He's just sort of floating in the air. Let's add some gravity. So the way gravity works in the real world is the gravity of the earth creates a force uh, on all objects, which creates an acceleration downwards. And in our case, we can add some acceleration to our cat by grabbing the set my sprite X to block. And what this block does is it lets us change many properties of our sprite. First, set the drop down to cat again. And then here you can see all these different properties we can set. And the one we're interested in is the acceleration in the Y direction. So remember Y represents the vertical axis and X represents the horizontal axis. And in video games, it's tradition to have the top left of the screen be 0, 0 in the coordinates, 0x, zero 0y. Zero so to accelerate downwards, I need a positive acceleration. And so if I put it in 350 there, now you can see when the cat falls off, he falls down. And if I were to do a negative acceleration here, you'd see he'd fall upwards. So down is what we want for now. And now our cat's stuck, can't make it to the next spot. So we're missing jumping. Let's go ahead and add that. If you go to the controller category, drag out the on A button pressed block. What this does is every time the A button is pressed here, it's going to run some code similar to all this code that was running inside the on start event block. Make code uses event-based programming where there's a cause and then an effect. So the cause here or the event is on start or on the button pressed. And the effect is running all of this code that's attached here. So to make our cat jump, we can apply velocity. To do that, go back to the sprites category and drag out the set my sprite. Uh, block again, and instead of the X, we want to set the velocity in the Y direction, and we want to do that for our cat. Now, uh, if the gravity is pushing downwards with a positive number, then we want to uh, jump by setting our velocity going upwards, which would be a negative number. So let's try something here, 150, and now when we jump, you can see that our cat leaps off the ground, and then sort of slowly falls back down. And you see he can't quite jump high enough to make that. Let's make him jump a little bit better. All right, our cat can now jump across the chasm. Now, one thing you might have noticed is that we can still move up and down uh, without jumping using the directional keys. To fix that, we go to our move cat with buttons block and expand that. And in here you'll notice that there's an X and a Y component to the velocities that we move uh, the cat with. And we only want to allow horizontal movement. So we leave that alone and we set a zero for the Y component. Now the directional keys can no longer move the cat up and down, but we can still move side to side. So now the only way to move the cat up is to jump with the A button. And there we go. And so that's the end of our level. That's pretty small. Let's make the level a little bit bigger. Click on the tile map again, and you'll see that down here, this is the size of our level. It's 10 by 8. Let's make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to click until I get to 32 by 8. And I'm going to use the green color again to draw more of these dirt tiles. And let's have the finishing platform be over there. Let's see if we can make that now. All right, so we're jumping along and our cat went off the screen. So what we're missing here is for the camera to follow the cat. To do that, click on the search bar and type camera. And you should see camera follow sprite. Let's drag that down into our on start block and change the drop down to cat and play our game again. And now you can see that the camera follows the progress of the cat. 
Let's see if I can make it. Oh, there we go. Now, you'll notice that I actually jumped while in the air. So that's something we haven't addressed, is um, the cat can actually technically just sort of fly around. What we want to do is set it so that the cat can only jump when it's on the ground. To limit ourselves to a single jump, we can simply stop ourselves from jumping any time that we're already uh, in motion in the Y direction. So go to the logic category and drag out the if true then block. This is a conditional, and this is going to let us check to see if we are moving. Also in the logic category, drag out the um, 0 equals 0 block. This lets us compare two numbers, and the numbers we want to compare are the y component of the cat's velocity. So from the sprites uh, category, drag out the block I did, and then set the cat drop down. And we want the y velocity to be 0 before we're allowed to jump. So that means if we're in the air, we can't jump again. And that means if we're falling, we can't jump again. So we have no um, double jump, effectively. That makes our game a little bit more fair. But one other thing you might have noticed is that our cat can just fall off the world. There's no consequences to that yet. So we want to check to see if our cat has fallen off the world. To do that, go to the game category and drag out the on game update block. Again, this is an event block. And this is going to run code every time the frame updates. The frame updates every time you see anything happen, any movement or actions um, by the keys. So go to the conditional uh, category again, the logic, and drag out an if block again. And we want to say if the cat's current y position is uh, below the screen. And what below the screen means here is uh, the y starts at 0 up in the top left. So it's at its maximum down in the bottom part of the screen. So we want to see if the cat's y position is greater than or equal to the screen height, which is at the very bottom. So now if we fall off, oh, I didn't add any code inside of here. Go to the game category and drag out the game over block. We want the game to be over if we fall off. So let's fall off and there you see the game over screen. Now we've got a way to lose the game. Let's add a way to win the game. For that, go back to our tile map and select a new color. I'm going to choose red and put this where you want the final goal to be. So I'm going to put it at the very end of the map here, that little red dot and if we go play our game, we should see at the very edge a red dot. So I didn't quite make it, but there was the red. Um, and like we did with the grass blocks, we want to add a custom uh, visualization for what red means. So now go to the scene category and drag out the set tile block. Like we did with the grass block, we want to click on this first gray box and click red. And then here, I'm going to draw the end goal for our cat. In this case, I'm going to do a portal so that the cat can go on to another level. Now when we get to the end of our level, we see our little portal there. And when we interact with the portal, nothing happens. So we have to set the wall property of the portal to on. And again, this doesn't mean it's actually a wall. It just means that it'll collide with things. Now, to win the game, we want to go to the scene category and drag out the on collision block here. So what this does is it says whenever uh, a sprite of kind player, and again, our cat is of kind player, it's a wall of color red. So red is the symbolic color of our portal that we've been using here and in the level map. Uh, we want to run some code. And the code we want to run is game win. This is the same block as the game over block, but you want to set the condition to winning. 
Now, when the cat makes it to the end of the level, you can see that we win. All right, so there's our little game. We'll stop there for now and check out our future tutorials.